I just added a new controller to my current setup. Now, I love working with controllers. I use more than one. And the reason is I love to speed up my workflow when producing, recording, and especially mixing. And working with controllers are a good tool to do so. Let me show it to you. Okay, until now, we had the CC121 that was the go-to controller to control Cubase. But now the CC121 is no more. It's discontinued. Now this guy, the Mobi One by a very small company called Cube Audio. We're going to jump straight into a Cubase session, try this guy out. I'm going to show you how you can control EQ, compression, saturation, and so on and even plugins. And that will give you a good idea on how fast a controller like this one can speed up your Cubase workflow. Okay, the Mobi One is right in front of me. I have Cubase open. I'm gonna dive right in. First, let's talk about the price and get this out of the way. We're talking about the 349 pounds, which goes at around 450 US dollars. So it's a pretty good price for this type of controller. As you can see, there's no screen or anything. You know, it's pretty simple. The knobs are made of plastic. They seem pretty light to the feel of it, but they do feel pretty comfortable. Uh, they are dented. Okay, so this is something to know. You can actually hear them just a bit, you know, when I turn the knobs. But they are also very precise, okay? So I'll show you that later on uh, straight from Cubase. The build is quite nice. Uh, it's handmade. So the company Cube Audio is owned by this one guy that builds this whole controller by himself. So I have a mix session going on here. Now there's several tracks on this session. Um, so the cool thing about the Mobi One right away is by using the track, I can, you know, go from one track to another from the Mobi One and it's going to show right away in Cubase. I can only do the reverse, uh, select a track in Cubase and right away I'll be able to control it from the uh, Mobi One. So let me open by clicking on this button here, a channel settings window and you will see the minute I uh, go from one track to another, it will adapt right away. Okay, so I will see the change on the channel settings window. Okay, which is quite cool. Now I'm in a big session, I can actually press on track and that will jump by 10 channels. Okay, which will be faster to go from one end of the console to the other. If I click again, I'm gonna get back to a single channel change which is quite nice. To set it up, you create a generic remote, which part of the controller will work on. And for everything else, it will use the MIDI remote from Cubase 12 and above. And if you're using an older version than Cubase prior to Cubase 12, it's all covered. There's also documentation provided to help you out uh, set up the Mobi One with older versions of Cubase. So the main role of the Mobi One is to control a channel in Cubase uh, and mainly everything that is included uh, within the channel settings window uh, or a regular channel. Okay, so for example, I have the volume, which is going to replace an actual fader. Okay, I would actually prefer to have a fader to be honest with you, but you know, this knob does the job pretty well. And if I click on the volume, there you go, it's gonna get back to unity point because all those knobs, you can also press on them to assign to a specific command, okay? So uh, you can turn them around and press on them, which is quite nice. Same for the, uh, the panning, left and right, and there you go. I click, it goes back to the center. On my left, at the bottom left, I have the modes, which I'm gonna get to uh, later. Uh, and then I have uh, this guy, which is the dial speed control. Okay, so let me show you if I bring down or up the channel fader. Uh, the resolution is quite nice, okay? So there's a nice resolution. And if I wanna fine tune a bit more, I can press on this guy. And there you go. Now the resolution is going to be a bit more tight for fine tuning. Okay. Which works pretty well, actually. Very useful, especially when you work with EQs, uh, compressors, and all sorts of processing, you know, where you just need to dial in and be very precise. And this will work pretty well, uh, even if they are dented knobs. Okay. So I have the transport play. Stop, activate, deactivate the cycle loop. 
I can go from one marker to the other with those uh, buttons here, the previous and next button. If I keep my finger on the previous one, it's going to go back to the beginning of the session. If I keep my finger on the next one, it's just going to go from one marker to the other. Uh, the cool thing is uh, what I can control within the Mobi One. Uh, I have the full EQ from the uh, channel settings window that I can control right away. Now, if I go down to the MIDI remote in Cubase, uh, I have the MIDI controller set up to uh, Cube Audio and I have my mapping page set up to Mobi One. And this is the default mapping page uh, that you use when working with the Mobi One in Cubase. And note that there's several other uh, mapping pages that are included to control other Cubase plugins. I'm going to get to that later. So I'm going to stay into my default mapping page. And from this point, the minute I select a channel, whether it's from Cubase or from the Mobi One, I'm able to dive right in and start using EQ, for example, or the pre-section of the channel. So uh, let's play some music. And right away, if I look at the left side of the Mobi One, I have the pre-section from this point. And by the way, I'm actually on the master outputs of this session. Okay, so I can turn up or down the pre-gain level, which I work with a lot. Uh, I can activate uh, or deactivate the high pass filters, low pass filters also, play around with them, you know, in a very fast and simple way. Play around with the slopes also. You know the filter slope that simple okay so this is a very cool way and a very fast way and efficient way to reach those parameters on any selected channels and i use that all the time now and since i integrated the movie one on my setup uh, i tend to use this section a lot when it comes to eq very simple i activate the bands with these buttons i can start eqing right away in a very simple way play with the um, the Q factor, move frequencies, bring up or down, play around with the filter type in a very fast and efficient way. Okay, let's go to the channel strip. And this is actually very, very cool because you can control everything coming out of the channel strip again by only having a, a channel selected okay now i have some modules loaded and each of them are allocated to a specific row and you can actually see which one is allocated to which row so the first one is the pre-section as we saw before uh then the second one is the gate so i can activate the gate and start dialing in that simple okay uh, same for the compressor let me bring the compressor to the standard one and i'm gonna activate it there you go and start dialing in so very very simple and if i want to jump to the second one i'm just gonna have to go and select it and this is the tube compressor now and this is where the modes are gonna come in place so i'm now in mode one and there's a total of six modes the second mode is on this one and that will control the tube compressor so the tube compressor is mapped to be uh to be worked out of mode two and same for mode three, which will go with the vintage compressor. Okay, that's simple. Same for the saturation. So the first mode is magneto. Second one uh, will be uh, tape saturation. And the third one, the tube saturation. And for the de I can jump on mode two and start working with it from the first row, which is allocated to pre, but in mode two, it's gonna be allocated to the de -esser. Whatever is down and on the side is not controlled by any modes. Uh, so if you have a Cubase Pro, you can control the uh, control room level with this knob. Uh, we can unmute all tracks in the session or on solo all tracks in the session also. There's the listen uh, button here that is very handy, you know, that I use all the time. So in my case, if I listen to this channel, but only the effect coming out of the channel, I'm going to click on listen. This is how I configured it in Cubase. And I'll be able to monitor the effect only without the dry signal. Okay, pretty practical in my case. Anyways, uh, there's the 
a button which is going to bring up the channel settings of the selected channel uh, and the rest you know read write uh, and monitor also if you need to monitor a channel you know you just click on it and that's it you're good to go so it's very nice to work with very simple also and works very well to control a channel in cubase now when it comes to plugins uh, that is a bit more tricky and the reason why is a simple we're using the mini remote in cubase and without going into uh too much technical aspects of the uh, the mini remote uh, basically uh, you need to have a mapping page to control and to set up the mapping of certain plugins uh, so for example i have a frequency right here that I'm gonna insert on the first uh, slot of uh, this channel. And from this point, from the mapping page, I'm gonna need to select mode for frequency. And now since frequency is on the first insert of the channel, I'll be able to control it as far as the mode four is on. Straight from the movie one, so I'm gonna keep my finger on the first mode. It's gonna start flashing. I'm in mode four and there you go. The first row will control the first band, second row, the second band, okay? Third row, the third band and so on and so forth. Okay, so pretty easy to move around, you know, and it's all mapped up. And all those mappings come with the Mobi One. So you download the whole thing, you have again documentation to how to install them, how to work with them, and uh, a list of what all the controls do. Okay, so you're all covered. And you can also map your own plugins if this is supported by the plugin you are mapping. Uh, for example, I have the BX control, uh, which is one of my uh, go-to channel strip that I like to work with. When I work with it, most of the time, it's gonna be on the first insert of the channel, and this is where it is right now. So I'm gonna select uh, the BX mode four, which is not provided with the Mobi One. I actually made it myself and uh, map the whole plugin. Um, from the MIDI remote in Cubase. Now, if you want to know how you can do this using any controllers, let me know down below. And if I have lots of demands, I'll make a video on it. So from this point on, I can open the plugin. And there you go. Now the compressor is working the ratio right here. Uh, the uh, all four bands that I have allocated on these four um, EQ rows on the Mobi One. The fader is right here, and I decided where to uh, to allocate and map those commands. Okay, the end gain is right here on top, at the same place where my pre gain is uh, usually. So pretty easy to work with. Now to go from one mapping page to another, I can click straight uh, within the MIDI control, but this is not very practical. Uh, but when I'm on mode four on the Mobi One, these two buttons here will jump from one mapping page to the other, okay? Which is gonna be pretty fast and easy for me to select another mapping page. Now, the cool thing is that they also provide a full session so you can test it out because there's a list of all the Cubase plugins that are mapped out for you to use right away uh, with the Mobi One. So Auto Pan, the Flanger, you know, Phaser, uh, Tremolo, Vibrato, and so on. So Studio EQ, the Multi-Tap Delay also uh, can be fully controlled. Uh, with the Mobi One, uh, same for the Mono Delay, Stereo Delay, and so on. So there's a bunch of them that are already mapped out for you to use right away out of the box when you put your hands on the Mobi One, uh, which is quite nice. But again, you know, controlling plugins with this type of controller requires a bit of work because you will need to map a plugin yourself if that plugin is supported to be mapped, okay? And the one included in Cubase, you will know from the provided session on which insert slot they were mapped out okay so you can work with them but when it comes to control the channel on its own everything from the channel strip the eq of a channel the pre-section of a channel the fader the panning all that stuff the movie one does the work pretty well so if you're someone who works already with the channel strip the eq you know all uh, stuck plugins out of cubase you will probably like working with this type of controller you know so it's uh, it's a good buy especially for the price compared to uh, everything that is out there controllers are expensive and for what this one does and its integration in cubase i think if you're a cubase user this could be pretty cool to work with do you think 
this little guy, the Mobi One, can replace the CC121. Let me know down below. And if you use a controller on your side, let me know which controller you like to work with. If you want to know more about the Mobi One, I'm going to leave the link down below. Take care, my friend. Until next time, see ya.